Hi guys, and welcome to this Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. We are breaking into our season of looking at foot charts because we have our fabulous panel who are answering questions before a live audience on Zoom. And I'm really looking forward to the questions and also the answers. Hello everybody and welcome to Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. We're going to try something new tonight, which is we have an expert panel of reflexologists and if I can introduce them one by one and if you could then just say hello so anybody watching can just sort of see who they are. So we have, uh, let's do the ladies first because we are chivalrous here. So we have got Ziggy Bergman. Absolute pleasure to be here, David. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And we have Amanda McCauley. Hi, thank you for having me here. And then we have got um, two um, fabulous uh, male reflexologists from opposite sides of the world. From Greece, we have got Speros Dimitrikoulos. Kalispera, everybody. <laughs> Kalispera, I take it that means good evening. Dave, you're getting better by the minute. <laughs> Oh, fabulous. And then last but certainly not least, from the other side of the Atlantic, from Florida, United States of America, we have the amazing Sam Bellier. Hello, everyone. Just like Ziggy, pleasure to be here. Okay, so without any messing around, we're going to kick off our first question. And Sam, being as you were the um, last one to be introduced, can I put this question to you for starters? Fiona. Fiona Staunton, we have a, a question from you. Hi, everybody. My name is Fiona. I live in Dublin in Ireland. And how do I respond to people who say, oh, my God, you're a reflexologist? I don't know what that is, but for starters, I can't bear someone to look at my feet, never mind touch my feet. So that's to me is just I go, wow, H help somebody. How do I? How do you get through that obstacle? There's a lot of that when I say it, you know? This is such a great question. And I think it this is the perfect panel to touch on this because we're so diverse as practitioners. Um, and I think my gut reaction to that is, are you aware that reflexology is not just on the feet? Mm. I know in my work specifically, I do feet, hands, face, and ears. Um, in my latest book, I talk about tongue, pulse, and eye assessment as well. The idea that reflexology extends far beyond the feet. The map is a universal hologram where we're looking at the larger picture through the smaller window, right? But if somebody, like as an example, I have a military base near where I am and some clients do not have feet to work on. So what do you do in that situation? That's on you as the practitioner to widen your scope and educate your clients about the infinite possibilities this modality uh, can allow people to enjoy. Thank you. Ziggy, I think you would also be a perfect person to bring in on this kind of question. Well, I mean, my this is a perfect answer, which is, you know, work somewhere else. Yeah. So, you know, for me, that would be facial reflexology, um, you know, and the zones go, as Sam was saying, go all the way up the body. They, they don't stop at the neck. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was really because of, you know, Dr. Riley and Dr. Fitzgerald, lovely student Eunice Ingham. Yeah. who created that original foot map mm -hmm. um, and because she was passionate about the feet mm -hmm. um, and that's why reflexology has been focused on the feet mm -hmm. um, but in uh, the east it's always been a whole body therapy and so you know that's you know like Sam I also I focus on the face but I also work on the scalp mm -hmm you know, the hands and feet, mm -hmm. and that makes it like a whole body treatment, mm -hmm. which is rather fabulous. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's what I would really say. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I love, I have facial reflexology, I have hand reflexology, but it's when, it's, it's, their pe it's people's perception of the feet 
So I've often heard they mirror the soul, but it's just when it's the perception. We know energy speaks, we know we're bigger than the feet, but it's that response where they go, oh, I hate my feet. And then you just feel like you're just hitting and you have to move through, you know, into another scope of it. But thank um, you guys. Yeah, it's the, it's the hate bit. <laughs> Not to drag out this question too long, but I'm I'm so reminded of Jane's work with foot reading. And in her book, she talks at the very beginning of when someone says, I hate my feet, what they're really saying is I hate myself. And I think that that potency really just draws our compassion for that person. And to, instead of reacting from a place of fear, or from a place of feeling shut down, our response should be, you know, I understand that. And you would be amazed at how many people feel like that too, but your body is never something that you should hate. And maybe we can work on that together. Lovely, thank you, Sam. Mm. Thank you. That's absolutely an excellent way to kind of conclude that sort of question. The way that you sort of say about that, um, uh, the way that somebody might feel about themselves and then let's work on this together in a way that the client can. I think that's just smashing, absolutely smashing. Okay, next question then is Francesca. Um, Sam, this is an obvious one for you, but if anybody else does want to dive in on this one as well, um, but Francesca, can we have your question please? Yeah, sure. So hi, everybody. So I'm relatively new to reflexology. I only actually graduated last year and I started training um, just soon after we went into the original lockdown. And so I've read absolutely loads and loads of books, including yours, Sam. Um, your first one anyway. I've got the second one. that's not, not started it yet. But um, there seems to be different opinions on how the feet correlate to the past and present. Um, you know, with some people thinking that the left foot is the past and others thinking that it's the present. And this really kind of has really confused me um, because people seem to have really strong opinions about it. So I just wondered what the um, what the panel thought, you know. So, yes. So start with you, Sam. I think your past, your present is left, isn't it? Yeah. And I love what Ziggy said before about the idea of cross-cultural reflexology being an important place to go at some point in your practice. At some point, you should immerse yourself in the ways that other people think differently than you and let that be a test of your own abilities and really kind of embrace that instead of saying one way is right and one way is wrong. Um, I grew up in energy medicine saying that the right side of the body is the present. And so when I approached foot reading and found it to be the opposite, I was also extremely perplexed. However, I applied the scientific method to this process and started to validate through client experience what I found to be the truth, which was the right side in foot reading is where we hold the past and things that have already occurred that are being digested and broken down. If we wanted to take this to a TCM place, a traditional Chinese medicine place, the liver side of the body, right? Um, versus the left side where we both ingest into the stomach and expel through the colon is more uh, left-hand side, that present moment. And that's, that's how I've kind of come to understand it. But I always tell my students like, go forth and conquer, like do the work. If, if I'm wrong, let me be wrong. If the work is wrong, let it change. But I can tell you from years and years of practicing it, this is the way that I found to be most successful. And I encourage you to find out the same or different. Thanks. Now, um, Amanda or Spiros, I'm, I'm not, um, Spiros particularly, I'm not aware of whether you do foot reading or not, Amanda. Um, do you have a, um, a left, right, um, as far as past, present is concerned? Um, well, I don't know how to answer that question as elaborated as Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm with Sam on that. I've um, always been told that the left foot is the present and the future and the right foot is the past. Um, yeah, for all the same reasons that Sam has said. And that's what I was taught at the college that I went to. So that's what I teach my students as well. 
Excellent. Speros, have you have you um, heard of it and the other way around at all? Uh, we do use um, it is uh, it is it is taught in Greece foot reading. Aristotle, uh, the philosopher, has the books Physiognomics, and he does have some quotes on the feet also, too, at least, because this is huge reading. So from uh, what I have read and found, and he describes uh, character and um, what he observes on, uh, on people. Uh, and for Pythagoreans, I'm going Greek, as you can see, they would wear the, if I'm correct, my rather my source is correct, if it's correct, the right foot, they would wear the right foot shoe first, and then the left shoe. It was part of their culture and their philosophy uh, in many things and in this way also. And uh, in my opinion, for the colleague that asked, the, even though she's new, we're all colleagues here. So um, yeah, there are some, uh, because students ask about this also, there is some confusion, especially online, and this is good because it stimulates that. So I would uh, recommend to our colleague and to ourselves uh, to think how we would decide, you know, you can go both ways in a sense, if you think of where the large intestine begins. People speak about the heart, but yes, but the heart, the right side of the heart in the first zone, as Ziggy mentioned very well, that speaking about the zones, because this, I think, has been left out of uh, our education generally. Uh, so that's where the spark, the heart gets its spark, isn't it? I don't remember the name, uh, the anatomical name in English, Flevokom was in Greek. So it's on the right. So you can think about it in different ways. In Greece, it's right side, the past, left, uh, present, and ongoing, if you like. It's interesting, yes. Excellent. Thank you so much, Spiros. That's brilliant. Okay. May I please now ask Giovanna? to ask your question. Hi everybody, thank you for, uh, for choosing my question and um, thank you panel for being with us tonight. I'm from Montreal, Canada. And my question to the panel is, what inspired or guided you to find your specialty within the field of reflexology? Giovanna, thank you. And I do remember when you sent your question, you said, this is to everyone. So I think you're quite, so, so again, we're going to be chivalrous. Um, we started with Ziggy last time. So can we start with Amanda for this question, please? Um, well, I specialize in crystal reflexology um, and I'm an energy healer. I do Reiki and I teach Reiki and crystal healing. So what better combination to have? then energy work with the reflexology. And that's why I incorporated putting them together. And it's absolutely amazing. And if you've never tried it, you should definitely give it a go. Fabulous, so, yeah. fabulous, <laughs> excellent. Ziggy, um, can we hear from you to reply to this one, please? Um, so in, in what inspired me, um, originally um, I, had an experience with reflexology and it was with um I was going to go into a hospital for an operation on my eye and the day before um Louise Keat um who some of you may know um took my foot and she said oh for heaven's sake give me your foot and she pressed the eye reflex so hard my left eye started to water and whatever was lodged in there that they were going to have to operate to remove came out. And before that, I'd always thought, well, reflexology, I never turned down a lovely foot massage. It was nothing, it, you know, but I didn't really believe it until that point. And so that, I, and then I decided to train in it. Um, and um, so that started my path into reflexology. Um, and then I lived for many years in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, that has a really large Native American community and it attracts a lot of shaman and healers. 
It's where all the Californian hippies had their communes. And, um, you know, so it's got this really amazing culture. And I had um, a amazing shamanic treatment um, that part of it uh, was the pressure points and work on the face and the scalp. And I had the most profound life-changing experience. And what interested me the most about it was that the approach to healing was a psycho-spiritual one in which it wasn't just about the mind and the body, it was also about the soul. And it was also how the soul connects to Mother Earth and connecting that person back to their origin. And so that experience, and I was still a TV director at the time, completely different profession, but it had such a profound effect on me. I started to learn it, never with any intent to practice it. Um, and then um, later on, I went to study it. I learned more. I went to Japan. And I experienced uh, facial reflexology using a gua sha tool um, and different places in the world. And then eventually um, I could see the map in my head. I could see what I wanted to do. Uh, and I started to create Bergman method facial reflexology. And so it really came out of a profound healing experience with reflexology um, that then triggered everything else so what a great way to <laughs> discover that's absolutely amazing um who should we go for next spiros or sam spiros or sam. i think let's go with spiros spiros so um what guided you to find your speciality within reflexology focusing on uh, orthopedic reflexology and what the word orthopedic written the way with an e means to stand on your feet written in the english language with um pedic a and e um this is means child all right just to uh, because people make the assumption i'm with the mioskeletal specialty or only rather it's the anatomy of the feet one quick answer would be uh, I needed something Greek because there was meridian therapy. I've studied at Ayurveda and uh, nerve reflexology, my like reflexology father, Nico Paoli and uh, Anthony, pa many styles. We all know this, right? So I was from Canada, Greek. Uh, I love reading the ancient Greeks and Hippocrates, you know, he was, um, in scientific documentation, what we would say case studies. And uh, not everything is by the gods, as it was thought back then, but there must be reasoning, explanation and through observation. So uh, I got into the anatomy because this was a part in combination with a Hippocratic teachings, because I'm Greek, I can read the ancient text. My English is of elementary level because I was born in Canada. Um, so I brought all this together. It was not in the reflexology world. What inspired me was uh, an article from um, Touchpoint DK, uh, Peter Lund's article, a great article on different ways why reflexology works. And that's where he mentioned the fascia. And I believe I was, if, one of the first, if not the first, but inspired from this article. So I look at the anatomy. It has to do with sports also. My specialty is this. I'm at a game. I was at an important game today, taking care of the national team. But behind it is love. So like what I tell my daughters is, you know, or the athletes younger, the advice is find something you wake up and you want to Google about it. You want to learn what happened in the news about it. What it gives you enthusiasm when you start your day what's your topic and then to this the parents will support you because they want you to be enthusiastic and happy i think so this is how it, it is enthusiastic and it does make me happy and i love the anatomy and studying because hippocrates states ars longa vita brevis 
the art is long, life is short. So he, he advises us to study. And that's why I like watching Sam's work. Um, I remember the article with the pulse, his video, I wrote an article on this, Ziggy's work on the face, the zones. She's one of the you know, international speakers on the face specialists with others respected ones. And they're all introduced in Greece. I don't want my students you know, to go to a conference and say, wow, who is that? They, I've heard of you. I want them to say at least that. And they can go on and study. Of course. All right. That's brilliant, Spiros. Thank you. So, Sam, um, what inspired you to find your speciality? Sure. So, very much like Ziggy, actually, I never intended to be a reflexologist. It was never uh, something that I sought out or wanted to do, but I tell all of my students that reflexology as a modality is alive. There is a, there is a, a spirit to it, an intelligence to this work and, and it calls to you um, and it keeps coming back and it keeps showing up. And so I just followed the breadcrumbs and I said yes enough times to fall down that rabbit hole to discover how potent this work was despite having a background in physical therapy and uh, massage therapy, reflexology was the thing that was taking away my client's pain, but not just physical pain, also mental emotional distress and digestive issues and balancing hormones. And it was very much like Spiro said, it, it got me intrigued, it got me interested. And the rest, as they say, is history. Thank you, Sam. That's brilliant. Do you know what? It's so interesting. The amount of people that I have heard that say that they didn't go looking for reflexology. Somehow it was reflexology that found them and then just would not let them alone. Um, it's quite amazing. Quite amazing on that, that kind of journey. Um, I'll just quickly answer, because um, I don't know whether um, Giovanna wanted me to answer this one or not. So Giovanni, did you, oh, you did. Yes, absolutely, David, yes. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. I'm, I'm very much just thinking, I'm just the host for tonight. That was So I'll just answer this one and then that'll probably be about it, I think, from me, because I don't want to get in everybody else's way. Um, but for, for me, um, people know that I specialize in what's called finger-free reflexology. And what it was is simply the amount of, um, people that used to come on my postgraduate courses. This is before I actually had my own school. Um, and they would come to me and say, oh, my fingers are aching. My thumbs are aching after I've done a few treatments. Am I doing things right? And I would check their technique. Invariably, it would be different to what I was teaching. And so I just showed them something different. And they said, that's fine. It's working. It's great. I'm not in any pain anymore. Then the end of the world happened to me when I was actually teaching my own students and they then started coming back to me and saying, David, my fingers are hurting. I'm thinking, oh shit, I'm teaching them wrong. So I then started to research repetitive strain injury and actually to my relief, I found out that actually, if you just keep on doing the same thing, again and again and again, you are going to get a strain, which then led me to investigate a way that we could deliver reflexology without using articulating joints. In other words, having to bend the thumb, having to bend the fingers. So with finger free, it was a case of using the non-articulating joints, still being able to deliver a fantastic treatment, um, but not at risk to the therapist anymore. So that's, that's, that's what gave me my uh, inspiration to come up with something uh, the way that I teach. Okay, so moving on, because I, I, I don't want to be in the spotlight. That's not the point of tonight at all. The point is for Ziggy, Amanda, Sam, and uh, Spiros to be our stars tonight. And of course, all the people who are asking questions. And we have a specialist question now. This is for Amanda, it's from Julie Grant Hepeshi. So Julie, could you ask Amanda your question, please? Yes, uh, yeah, thank you for being here. It's been, well, for inviting me. It's lovely and wonderful to hear the inspiration and joy coming from it. Uh, yeah, a question for Amanda. Um, 
about introducing crystals into a treatment. If you're seeing somebody for the first time, would you incorporate crystals or would you want to treat them first without so that you can see a difference? Mm. Well, hi, Julie. <laughs> Thank you for your question. Um, I wouldn't use crystals on the first treatment simply because they've come to me for a particular type of treatment at that point. Um, I would make them aware that I do crystal uh, reflexology and ask them possibly for the last five minutes of their treatment, would they like to experience it? But I wouldn't give them an actual crystal reflexology treatment initially, um, because if they didn't come for that, then I don't want to take away from what they came from for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I would definitely um, make them aware that I do do that. Um, and I have crystals under my chair, with crystals around the chair anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm the crystal lady. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, yeah, they would definitely know that I'm into crystals. But yeah, no, I wouldn't change their treatment. I would just ask maybe at the end, would you like five minutes as a taster um, and take it from there? Have you tried it? Yes, yeah. I've always had crystals around my room, but um, you know, I'm recently incorporating them mm -hmm. and it feels so joyful for me to use crystals but yeah. I'm aware that my enthusiasm I should let you know let the client make the choice but I like yeah. the way what you said about an introduction at the end yeah definitely because not everyone believes in crystals mm. and how great and powerful they are um but yeah we can you know ease it in there slowly for them um, mm -hmm. and not overwhelm them unless they want to be completely covered in crystals that sounds great <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for your question thanks Amanda and of course I would imagine there are some people Amanda that you get and they go oh yes please mm -hmm. and because you, you can never tell until you ask the question exactly exactly but they'll definitely get some crystal energy anyway because like I said I have them under the chair, I have them around the chair, I wear crystals, so it's, it's, it's all around me. Fabulous, fabulous. Mm -hmm. Okay, now then, moving on, because I'm very aware of the time. We're having a fantastic conversation, this is going on, uh, I'm, I'm really worried this is going to go on for far longer than I thought it was going to, but I'm not complaining. Okay, so uh, we have a question from Leslie Callahan, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, my question is to everybody on the panel. Who is your go-to reflexology hero, idol, that's present, not that's past, and why? That's a great question. Okay, now then, um, I'll, I'll see if we can get everybody. I'm not quite sure, just purely because of the time. Let's just quickly go with Spiros then, because we haven't heard from him for quite a while. Would this be to receive therapy or as an inspiration, a yeah. tutor? A, a inspiration, a tutor, a present. Um, I must respect uh, and mention Nico Paoli, but fall, it's so unfair, like uh, Anthony Porter, Hagar Basis, you know, like Inga Dugan's world. I, I did whatever I could to learn from as many people as right. uh, I could. Uh, Hannah Marguard, I you know maybe I'm rough on her sometimes, but she has offered you know so many people. But Nico Pauli because he changed me as a person reflexologist. Right. Okay. So I'm grateful. Amanda, who would you say would be your reflexology hero? You, of course, David. What? <laughs> yes, you've always been my inspiration. You have a wealth of knowledge. Um, you're a fantastic teacher. Um, and you're a bit like me, being like, if you're passionate about something, you just go forward and make everyone know about it. You were on the board of the Royal Society of Medicine at Hello. So, yeah, I've got that sort of 
go for it, look at me attitude when I'm passionate about something. So you are my inspiration. And that's why I chose to work at your college. Oh, good grief. I seriously was <laughs> not <laughs> expecting that answer. Oh. We, we can see okay. that you've gone a bit red. <laughs> I feel very embarrassed. <laughs> feel proud. Oh, gosh. Feel proud. Sam, Sam, get me out of here quick. <laughs> Help, who is your <laughs> reflexology hero? No, oh. David, sit in it. Enjoy <laughs> it. Allow it. You've worked hard. Um, as, as a reflexologist who got to train uh, in a particular school with Ingham Method, but outside of that had no idea that reflexology in the UK was so large. Um, and I had to seek out my own research internationally because the US doesn't have a lot of other strong teachers. I, I'd i say like the whole of the UK is my inspiration. You have so many amazing wonderful specialists and trailblazer blazers like Ziggy Bergman, like Sally Kay, like Barbara Scott, like Carol Samuels, everybody who specializes in a unique form of reflexology that they're bringing to the table. Susan Quayle with children's reflexology. So many amazing ways to do the same work for different populations. And I'd say that's collectively the culture of reflexology that I watch the closest. I'm just going to quickly try to divert attention as well by saying that my hero is Tony Porter um, for the reason that he absolutely found an original way of delivering reflexology. He says what he believes, totally stands by it as well. Um, there are some people in life that I will call um, weather vanes. Um, you, you sort of see sometimes on a, the, the top of an old English church, probably in other, other places as well, um, like a, something that points the way that the wind blows. And you've got some people in life who are like weather vanes. You've got other people in life who are like signposts, who don't change when the wind blows a different direction. And for that reason, I absolutely love Tony Porter because he stands by what he says. Um, he doesn't, um, I've got a, a dog jumping up at me here. So I do apologize if I've been a bit distracted just now as well. Um, so yeah, because he stands by what he says and he totally believes in it. And that is it as far as he's concerned. And that for me is absolutely fan fabulous, uh, a real trailblazer. Right, I'm going to quickly move on from this que from this question because I'm totally embarrassed by it. David, you forgot about Ziggy. Oh, uh, Ziggy, are you there? Yes, hello, I'm here. This is, I'm inspired by not necessarily teachers that I've trained with, but by hearing something that's new and exciting, because I think the best thing about having a teacher, you know, like Spiros, like Sam, like Amanda, that have originated a method, you know, is to hear them speak. So, for example, I, I a few years ago, I did Sally Kay's reflexology lymph drainage um, training. I don't work on the feet. So, <laughs> um, I've never used it, but it was absolutely brilliant. Um, so, you know, I feel inspired. I mean, but my inspirations come from, you know, people like Louise Mehta, who's a Shaolin monk and um, healer, um, Molly Larkin, Bearheart, people like that, that do extraordinary things, uh, probably more with healing than simply just reflexology, though. But um, I have, uh, you know, lots of inspirations, not everybody I've trained with, but um, I love hearing everything they say because they have a different perspective. And I think as a reflexologist, that's what really it can shift your entire practice to hear something that, um, you know, gives you a different perspective on the same thing that you've done yeah, brilliant. day in, day out. And that's what's brilliant about it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> even if it's not in your particular specialist area. 
Yeah. Ziggy, I actually love that answer. Yeah. I really, really do. Because that inspires me. It inspires me to when I'm watching this back again, I'm going to rewind and find your answer. I'm going to write down those names that you just gave us because they are names I've not heard before. And it's going to give me a new um, dimension to research. So there we go. So, I mean, even just listening to Spiros being busy because he was a, a national handball tournament because he's their reflexologist with the team. How brilliant is that yeah. to actually be out, you know, not in a treatment room? And that's that's the kind of thing that really excites me because it's like, wow, that's that's in that's in real life. That's with a real national team. That's brilliant. <laughs> it is absolutely fabulous. Right. Wendy, Wendy R. We've got two Wendy's here. So this is Wendy R. Um, would you please like to put your question to the panel? Uh, thanks again for having this. I just want to say that I'm inspired by Giovanna, who was my reflexology teacher, and she's an amazing reflexologist. Uh, my question to everyone is, how do you not get discouraged when your first new client does not come back? How do you keep your spirits confident and keep going? Excellent question. Um let's put this one to sam can we put this one to sam first please and this is did, did wendy r was this for everybody yes okay let's do sam first then my gut response is you don't there will always be a part of you that thinks you're inadequate the only thing that happens over time is you collect enough handful of miracles right with clients who love and adore you to remind you that not everybody is going to like you but that doesn't mean that you're a bad practitioner yeah and that only comes with time however the original sting of somebody saying you're not my therapist is devastating and i don't think it ever really goes away again you just through your practice become better at recognizing that you are not for everyone. Okay, Amanda, can we have your take on this one, please? Um, yeah, I totally agree with Sam. Uh, not everyone is for you. Um, don't take it personal. People come to you at the right time. The right people come at the right time. Um, not everyone's energy works well together. So you might do everything completely right, and they might enjoy the treatment, but just don't want to come back. Or just coming to you that once might be all that they actually needed at that time. Um, so yeah, don't, don't get hung up on it. It can be discouraging at first when you're new. Um, I've been there and I was thinking, oh, why is no one coming to get treatments from me? Um, but people need to know about you as well. So word of mouth is great. For people to come to you um but people have to know you first so don't get dis discouraged carry on doing what you do because i'm sure you're great at what you do and the right people will come to you at the right time fabulous ziggy can we have some wise words from you on this one well i think the first thing i'd say why are they coming for the treatment you know is it just for fun do they have a problem? You know, um, so that would be kind of my first question. Um, and, you know, the answers in that really. Also, I mean, I think it's letting go of expectations um, as well, you know, um, to make assumptions that clients are going to do certain kinds of things if you do certain kinds of things. Um, but also on a practical level, are you too cheap? The only time I've had a problem with clients, it was when I years ago when I used to have a clinic at Tri Yoga and I didn't charge a lot for treatments and people used to mess me around or they used to therapist jump. And then I actually tripled my prices and oh, my God, it shifted things. And people suddenly respected me. And that makes a difference. Because often when, when you get a hit, 
you lower your prices and it's not about the money at all for me it's about the respect so so that would be another thing but also are you making it clear that you've got a solution so that's why I asked why are they coming because you have to appear vital to a client otherwise people are really short of money right now so unless if you're seen as a luxury, they're not going to be coming on a regular basis. They're going to come when they feel desperate and they might hope it sorts itself out in one treatment. If you can uh, make it really clear the solution you have and to be vital, a vital part of their well-being, there are people that will prioritise their well-being. And those are the clients you want. So it's really about how you present yourself with your website, with your online uh, social media. And in particular, I am not, a, I'm really new to social media. I only just started my Instagram account like a few months ago, but I've done a couple of reels recently. And it's been phenomenal, the number of people that, aren't following me that suddenly I mean thousands that suddenly are watching or inquiring about things and training and things like that so that would be my other advice so when something bad happens like that get it to motivate you into action rather than to feel a hit to your self-esteem Ziggy that's absolutely wonderful wonderful Spiros um this was asked for all of us, so I'm going to include you as well. Do you have anything extra that you can add? The name of uh, the woman, the colleague asking, please, again? Wendy. Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Great question. Been there? Trust me, everybody has been there. Um, Sam spoke. I agree. I think wisely, Ziggy, from experience, she gave us some good advice. Now she reminded of us some good advice. I enjoy Jane Sheenan, by the way, when I hear her speak on this and Sam a lot. And they're very good. They give confidence, which is much needed in our field. Um, I think it is... It's your issue isn't the first client. You have to have many kinds of this situation. Just stand it, like go through it, all right? Many people will try. One day you won't want someone that maybe after the first appointment, this happens because we want, nobody asks the therapist, how do I feel because I'm touching you? All the clients ask, Oh, how is Spiros or what about this? Blah, 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 blah. Do they ever ask us how we feel with the energy of the other person or touching their body, their feet? So uh, what, I, what I went through is I did the 500 first times in order maybe to find uh, 50 clients that go through the year. There are these numbers, you know. So this is what you have to go through. All right, and maybe it's something good for you. You just have to stand there, right? Give, don't stop giving, offering. This is what we do. We're reflexologists. Don't stop offering. Those, the ones you want will come. Well said by the others. Excellent. Spiros, I love the way that you actually turned it around completely the other way as well, as to sort of like, it's just brilliant, brilliant. Very, very wise words from all of you. Now, we've got a question specifically from uh, Ziggy from Wendy Perry. Wendy, can we have your question, please? Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for inviting me, David. Um, Ziggy, um, i followed you now for a long time. Um, and I know I've messaged you a couple of times asking about going on the course um, because I'm doing my level five with Jubilee College. Um, and facial reflexology really, really, it blows my mind. But um, I wanted to know if it has the same effect on your body as um, foot reflexology and hand reflexology. 
really good question, Wendy. Brilliant. Um, so um, the answer is yes. It has the same benefits, even though the feet through the zones can, can go all the way up the body and affect things on the face, the brain, other areas of the body. Um, there's some unique benefits, though, about offering reflexology on the face. Um, and, you know, the, the most important ones um, are that you're working on muscle structures that can impact certain conditions. So, for example, when you're working uh, on clients that have, for example, Bell's palsy, and I've posted a few of these uh, yes. uh, pictures from, uh, and I always post pictures of people that have trained with me because, you know, you'd expect me to get results, but you, you really need to see them from, from people that have learned those techniques and then they're applying them. Um, but the, um, so with uh, Bell's palsy, for example, you're working over facial nerves, the seventh cranial nerve, the trigeminal nerve, if, if taste is also affected, things like that, um, as well as manipulating the structures. And so therefore, you have a, a better chance of um, alleviating the condition if it's stress related and Foot reflexology will get results with Bell's palsy, um, but the speed at which we get, you know, over 40 case studies between three and five treatments, there's no visual sign of Bell's palsy. That's an example. Mm -hmm. Also, things like sinus conditions. You've got actual sinus cavities in the face. You're clearing them as you're actually working and doing the sequence. So again, clients will often feel that in the back of their throat. So that's got an added mm. benefit. Headaches and migraines, you know, again, compression in the neck, the shoulders, um, this kind of area, and bruxism, which is linked to migraines. All of the, we get a lot of calls for uh, referrals from dentists. You know, again, wow. because of teeth grinding issues linked to migraines and things like that. So you can break that cycle because, again, you're working directly with massage as well as reflexology on areas. And so for certain conditions, I think it's better. There are some conditions where working on another part of the body is going to be better. Um, yeah. But certainly learning facial reflexology. Um has uh, added benefits to reflexology, I think. And also it works incredibly quickly, you know, so that you can have someone asleep in five minutes. And that's really, okay. really difficult to achieve um, with, you know, um, working in other areas. But I don't know, maybe other people feel differently. But, um, you know, I think I'm just passionate about working on the face. So, you know, if you talk to me, and it was interesting hearing the question earlier, you would think there wasn't reflexology anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and that's just because I'm passionate about its benefits. Excellent. Thank so you I so hope much. That answered it. <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I, I do look forward to doing the course. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank Ziggy, that was a wonderful, comprehensive answer. Thank you so much. So our next question is uh, from um, Anne Zaka. So Anne, could we have your question, please? Hello, thank you for having me. My question is, has anybody worked on brain tumours and had any results? At the moment, I'm working on one patient and I have result, but she had uh, the problem on the ears. Personally, I have three of them and I haven't got any result working on myself. Okay. Can I just ask, Anne, are these malignant tumours or are yes. they not? They are malignant. They are malignant. I have one in the sinus, so I, have, I don't see properly. My sight changes all the time. And I have two frontal ones. So, plus I have lots of headaches. Uh, I don't sleep anymore. 
and all what tumors causes and there's a, there are no medication or anything to help me and that's why i've become a flexologist ah mm -hmm. that totally makes sense um there's an expression that i hear again and again and again with my clients i've tried everything else you are my last resort and i would imagine that all the reflexologists that are watching this those who are attending this here and those who are going to be watching this on youtube later are probably probably nodding their heads at the moment thinking yep been there heard that expression before yeah. um so i'm just going to throw this one out does does anybody on the panel have um any advice for Anne as far as this is concerned i think ziggy's probably the best person for this one I was just thinking about time, as, yeah, yeah, because Ziggy very interestingly did ask uh, the uh, answer sort of the thing about uh, sinuses, which I thought was really, really interesting. I was just, I was actually. I mean, my my instant, just very quickly, and it's, yes. it's not a condition that I have um, worked with. But while you were talking, I was visualizing if you were my client. I would be working reflexes and sinuses using small facial cups. So sometimes there are other techniques that can, uh, the suction, um, you know, um, feels like it would shift things really well. Um, mm -hmm. But again, with the doctor's approval that that is safe with taking into account your entire medical history. And everything else that's going on but that that was you know sometimes using other techniques like the suction of cu gentle cupping this isn't the kind of cupping that's gonna bruise your face if it's done properly that's that was just what came out of listening to you that's great no lovely. So, i'm sorry i can't go into more detail because mm. that's not no absolutely absolutely um, Sam or Spiros, have you had experience of this at all? It doesn't matter if you haven't. No. <laughs> no, I'm not hearing anything. The one thing that I would say, um, and I would like to say something after. After. Go, no, no, go for it now while you're on, Spiros. Go on. The name of the colleague, please. Okay. Anne. This is Anne. Anne. So, Anne, uh, first of all, I would like to wish you much strength and uh, all the best from Khalkida, where I am. Thank you. Uh, you know, I always trust reflexology, the Ingham style, which is pretty basic in difficult situations. I always follow on Eunice Ingham. So the zones and the charting would be the toes. And because you started reflexology in China, when I trained uh, regarding Twina massage, the instructors would say, if the techniques are done properly, the therapist never has disease. So I was thinking, I just want to say this, that because you're practicing the thumb walking and we have our techniques on top, they are the brain zones. And uh, in a way, you, well, you found an occupation that will offer you therapy. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay, so the one thing that I would just sort of dive in on this one with personally, if I may, one thing that um, it, it may not be the same all over the world. In the UK, of course, we're not allowed to claim to be able to even treat somebody with cancer. Um, so just putting that one out there so that we're sort of clear of the... Yeah, and fast too. First. The, the one thing, again, I would echo exactly what uh, Spiros said is I do wish you strength. I wish healing for you as well. I wasn't aware that this question was a, was a personal one as well. I had assumed that this was that you got clients or I a do. client with this. I do as well. Because ah. obviously, as I have it, people come to me so I can treat them. Indeed. So it's great because it gives me so much strength and it helps me a lot. And that is so good to hear. So good to hear. The mm -hmm. one thing that um, if there was any reflex to work above all other reflexes uh, would be the pituitary. Um, this, I have worked on um, benign tumours personally, 
Not, though, um, for anything for the brain, in my personal um, experience. But um, the pituitary does seem to have the effect of being able to kind of kickstart the body's natural healing mechanisms where something needs to be reabsorbed. And the body is able to reabsorb tissue and tumors um, naturally. The thing is, though, that because this is um, um, a cancerous one, that's slightly a different realm because cancer is so good at camouflaging itself. So it's not a cancerous one. It's a benigno oh. one. Oh, sorry. I thought you said it was malignant. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I have do apologize. They're not cancerous. No, no. Right, right. Sorry, I do. I thought you'd said that they were malignant. I do no. apologize. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yes, absolutely. Go for the pituitary, repeat it three, four times within a treatment. And um, also, as Ziggy was saying, focusing on the actual physical area, um, but also on obviously the, the reflexes to do with this, so that the toes um, and uh, sort of all around that kind of area, um, not just the big toe, because of course everybody thinks of the big toe being the face, but all of the toes mm. as well is, is where I would say. If any of the other panel wants to come in on this, please, please do. No, okay. So Anne, thank you very much for your thank question. Thank you. Okay. So um, Samantha Marse, um, could I have your question please? You can certainly. Hello everyone, it's great to be here um, and I'm from North Yorkshire and the picture behind me is from North Yorkshire, there you go, in the summer though. <laughs> um, so my question is, I'm in the 10th month of my reflexology business, i.e. when I opened the doors after lockdown and would love to hear for, of your experiences from when you first started out and really in respect of how you kept your morale up during some quiet times or even the dreaded no-shows, which unfortunately do have a tendency to knock your confidence and pick away at you a little bit. So that's my question. Okay, Sam, can we go to you first, please? Sure. So as somebody who started their practice solo uh, right out the gate, it was a unique type of mental breakdown that I had when I was looking at an empty book for weeks on end, wondering if this was actually what I was supposed to be doing. And the way that I pacified that, that kind of crushing sensation was to go out and network and to work on my website. So I threw myself into learning how to uh, kind of optimize and work with technology uh, because nobody else in my area did reflexology. And so I was number one on Google in my area within a couple weeks of putting it on my website. And I leveraged that really, really hard. Um, but then I got out in the community and I started talking to anybody who would listen. I would do in-person events for free. I was in the trenches. I was in the weeds, just doing the work. Um, and eventually the client showed up. And as the client showed up, I didn't have to go out as much and word of mouth took over, but keeping busy is essential. Thank you. Okay, now, I'm not gonna ask everybody on this one because I'm very aware that we're, we're, we're going quite late. Uh, Amanda, can we have you in on this one, please? How would you um, advise Samantha uh, for just starting out in business? Um, well, yeah, hang on, hang on in there. Um, I used to have my own shop and treatment rooms in Sheffield um, and things were quite slow at first. Um, then I contacted all the GPs in Sheffield, made them aware that I do Reiki and I do reflexology at that time. Um, and I used to have a Reiki clinic that I used to do treatments for free. So I would get GP referrals for the Reiki, I would do for free. And then I would introduce them to reflexology. So some of them would then come to me for reflexology. Um, but yeah, it's marketing, um, Google ads, Facebook ads, social media is the way forward these days. Uh, you have networking events as well. 
find out where your local networking events are, go there, introduce yourself, let people know what you do. But yeah, also, why not contact the GPs in your area and surrounding areas, let them know what you do and that you're available and you'll be surprised. Reflexology is starting to really blow up now, which is great for us. Um, more people are becoming aware of it. So you definitely will get the clients. Yeah, contact your GPs. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for both of you. That's wonderful. Septa, could we have your question, please? So I'm Septa from the west of Ireland, Galway. And um, my question is in relation to a 78 year old client who, um, when her she had a cyst removed on the side of her face here, just above the eye, on just there on the temple area. And about three weeks later, she developed a chronic itch. This is three years ago, and a desperate chronic itch that goes all over her head. And also she got one on her shoulder at the back. She's had this for three years. She's had loads and loads of, um, you know, test done and so on. So anyway, well, how should I treat basically her is my question. This chronic okay. itch. Fabulous. Right. I am going to go to Mr. Anatomy and Physiology. I'm going to go to Spiros for this one. What would you su uh, um, suggest for SEPTA, please, Spiros? Hello, SEPTA. Quick question. Don't the easy ones come to reflexology? Please, somebody said before that, oh, David said, Pardon? oh, you're my last hope or one of my last hopes, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, the way you described it, yeah. I would look into the meridian, all right, and maybe Ziggy could help us out, give you a zone, think, because this began from what I heard a while back. So I would definitely look into the associated yeah. uh, meridian organ, try to make a correlation, check the reflexes in the hands and the feet and other charts. You described in the back, there are three cranial nerves and they resemble the gallbladder meridian. Uh, the two major, the major occipital, minor and auricularis, if I remember correctly. And then you, from the description is the trapezius area. There is the long thoracic nerve, which is rather rare finding anatomy pictures of this nerve, but you need this nerve in order to lift your, to have coordination, musculoskeletal, your hands with your rib cage. So it's interesting uh, if that area also is, but we are reflexologists. So what we describe in anatomy, we try to apply on our maps, either in the hands or feet. For, so try to visualize. I would suggest Googling these pictures, visualizing them healthy, and start working on these zones. Uh, I would recommend the hands, and I just want to say to everyone, I think like the face has been in vogue uh, the recent years before COVID and especially during COVID because of this uh, communication as we are having. I think the next thing that's coming is the hands because people, the way we're working on computers and so on, but because the dermatomes, the myofascial meridians of the hands are connected um, with the upper part of the body, brachial plexus and so on. Think of you described the back. So if you would extend your hand the dorsal aspect here, the yang part, you know, check those zones up to the elbow and dorsally the hand, all right? Spiros, I knew I could count on you. <laughs> Thank you, that's amazing. Septa, was that okay? Excellent, yeah, very good. And of course, along with, with the treatment you recommended, um, the, the um, oh, scarifying treatment, Actually, I did that on her and she's told me after her first treatment, she said she had the best in three years and she hadn't her symptoms back for about four or five nights. So that was good. Just, <laughs> but she, it's still ongoing. Now she's going to her neurologist on Friday. I have a feeling it could be trigeminal nerve or something as well. Yes, she has. Are you asking me something? 
Is there the trigeminal nerve involved? Is yes. That yeah, she's go well, she's going to a neurologist. And I'm wondering, would it be linked to that? Anything can happen. We're not here to associate. This is somebody I like to tell people, I hey, don't diagnose, I don't give names. I try through reflexology to assist fixing them. And uh, just to and the suddenly brain stem is mm -hmm. of interest in your description. So to go even further, because you're describing cranial nerves, the accessory nerve in the back is brain stem, the trigeminal nerve is brain stem, the three occipital and auricularis nerves are at the same right. levels as brain stem. But brain stem has to do with all autonomous mm -hmm. functions. So this is organs and reflexology is exceptionally good in organs. And I would just like to say something very important. In your description answer to me, you said uh, you thanked me for the treatment. This is a big mistake, a misunderstanding in teaching on social media. And so these are suggestions on points to examine to see if there exist positive reflexes. They are not fixed treatments because this is a theoretical approach. We don't have the person at hand, at hand, do we? So these are suggestions, but it's wonderful through quantum physics that if I persuaded you with my description and this empowers you, then this will come out in your therapy. And this happens in reflexology. We are stimulated by speakers, by tutors, by books, by examples, and it empowers us. And maybe this is why it works. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Spiros. Thank that was you. amazing. Okay, so let's go to our penultimate question. Christopher, please, could we have your question? I think it's something to do with chemotherapy. Yeah, okay. I'm Christopher and I'm from Manchester. Um, my question is are there any um, hold on, um, treating clients who are currently receiving chemotherapy um, are each of treatments too frequent or should they be done, um, <clears throat> done after the last session of chemotherapy? Okay, so treating clients who are currently receiving chemotherapy, are weekly treatments too frequent or should these be done after the last session of chemotherapy? I fancy taking a answer from one side of the Atlantic and an answer from the other side of the Atlantic. So you know who I'm going to go to now. Sam! What would we be talking about in the USA? Would it, um, what would you be saying to this question? Uh, first and foremost, if somebody's coming in actively being treated for cancer, that is just a huge red flag client. So always make sure in holistic therapies that clients aren't sneaking around behind their attending physicians back trying to see you, uh, that they're aware of the body work taking place. One of the things that I find a lot uh, is that clients do not inform their physicians of the body work and therefore physicians are confused. Why, why are these treatments being disrupted? Uh, so what Sally says in her work, uh, and she might've learned from someone else as well, I believe uh, that we should time our treatments to within a few days of the following chemotherapy treatment to allow the chemotherapy to do its work throughout the body so that we are not flushing out the chemical medicine. Um, and that is the approach that I agree with the most, because if somebody's taking that aggressive stance of care, then we should let that medicine do what it's supposed to do within the body as long as it can do it, and then prepare the body to receive the next round of that experience. Okay, that's a Great. very interesting answer. Um, can I go to Amanda? Let's just see if we've got anything different on this side of the Atlantic. <laughs> okay. Hi, Christopher. So sorry to throw a spanner in the works here, um, but I don't agree with Sam's philosophy. Um, maybe it's just because we're taught differently because we're in different parts of the world. Um, I yes. teach fertility, uh, 
fertility. I teach palliative <laughs> and cancer care and we yeah. say definitely give them reflexology. Once a week is totally fine. You can even sit with them in the hospital while they're receiving chemotherapy and give them reflexology. I believe there's a hospital in Manchester, is it called Christie's? Yeah, I've told my client now to go, she goes about... Right, so they actually yeah. have reflexologists sitting there while you're receiving chemotherapy and giving you reflexology. Uh, because reflexology helps to increase the blood flow through the body, um, mm -hmm. my belief is that it will get the chemotherapy to those areas where it needs to go quicker. It won't flush it out because it has a task and, and it's, it knows where it's going, basically, it, that's the medicine, but we're helping it to be received by the body to give it the best chance of succeeding that we can. That's my yeah. belief, that's what I teach. I'm not saying your theory's wrong, Sam, um, but we're from different sides of the world, so we're obviously taught differently, but in this uh, country, um, it is perfectly fine. Um, as long as someone's qualified in palliative care, so whether they do a CPD course, if they're level three, or if they do the level five, it's included in the course anyway. So yeah, 100%, give them reflexology, all day, every day. <laughs> That's fabulous. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm really quite pleased in a way that we've actually had a different answer at last. Because yeah. so far, all the way through, it's been a case, oh, yes, I agree with Sam. Oh, yes, I agree with Amanda. Yes, I agree. A lot of agreeing with Ziggy. Everybody's been agreeing with Ziggy. Um, but it's really, really great to get two different answers. I think that's absolutely fabulous. Now, there is somebody that wasn't able to make this evening um, who did ask a question. It was Susan Lawrenson. And I've, I've got a feeling that all our panel is probably going to agree with this last one, because if I may be so bold, I'm actually going to sort of answer her question. She says, have you ever thought of collaborating to open a school bringing the ultimate advanced reflexology qualification? For example, an advanced beginners course, advanced intermediate course, and an ultra advanced course. And I kind of get the impression that she's asking if all of our panel has thought of actually collaborating to be able to do this. And my kind of answer, Susan, I'm so sorry you weren't able to be with us tonight, but actually, haven't we kind of done that tonight? So, Ziggy, would you think that we, we've actually accomplished this, haven't we? I, I think, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, of course, um, say, Sam, um, you're, you're right the other side of the world. It would be a little bit difficult to try to actually do that ultra school, wouldn't it, really, I suppose, just geographically? Not just geographically, but also we've talked about this at length, training requirements and legislation, very different all throughout the world. So I think that what we're doing right now as a community via Zoom is the answer. The more we can come together on a platform and not necessarily for the purposes of certifications or pieces of paper, but to just share and to allow, I think that's the best way forward. I think that's so right. I mean, to be able to share, to be able to impart our passion, because that seems to be a real overriding thing out of this evening, is we are all passionate, not just the, the guys on the, the, the panel that we've got here, because we do have the most wonderful panel. We really, really do. But all of us, we are absolutely passionate about what we do, aren't we? Um, so We're all very different as well, David. And and with this question, it's like the you know the ultimate advanced course. And I think what's really special about everyone in the panel that we have our own specialist area that we're passionate about. And you know, it's not about doing a course and then being better than everybody else because you've done this specialist course. It's about following what you know what what really strikes your heart when you're choosing your cpd courses so 
you know, Amanda specializes in a completely different area to Samantha or Wendy or, you know, we, we all have our different areas that we're interested in in reflectology. So, you know, I don't know. I think the panel is a great way of doing it. But, but um, you know, yeah. And uh, just as Sam says, the uh, and Sam's absolutely right. Um, he was over here in the UK uh, a month ago, and we were talking about the different requirements, the different legislation. It would be a nightmare to try to actually do a physical school where we got the ultimate teachers. And then uh, I've just seen on the chat, Sam has written something on there as well. He says, ultimate means something different to everybody as well. I mean, it's a case of, um, you know, to me, Tony Porter would be the ultimate teacher. For other people, Ziggy Bergman herself would be the ultimate teacher. Sam would be the ultimate teacher for somebody else. Amanda would be. Um, so it is such a difficult one. Um, and on, on that note, I would like to thank everybody that has been with us tonight. Um, Ziggy, you've been amazing. Sam, you've been so insightful. Amanda, absolutely amazing. And Spiros, you have been um, fabulous for literally diving across from um, where you've been with your handball team and then getting to us. Um, I want to share something with you guys. Can I? May I? Of course you can, Spiros. Of course Hello. you can. I want you to see this. Uh, this is Adonis. He is a student. And uh, he is also a handball player. This is where it gets interesting. So he plays in the Premier League of Greek handball. But today he was the reflexologist, massage therapist of the national team. So he came along, you know, to help. But what is interesting is Adonis is going to an island. Which island? Nicholas. He's, you want to say hello to hello. everyone? All right. He's going to work at a spa in Mykonos, so he had to come and give his exam, which he has neglected. And we were at the game tonight. He helped out. Great result for our team. And now he was, you know, filling in his exam. Get back to it. <laughs> Congratulations, Adonis. Thank you. Look at him. He's working away there. <laughs> he wants to go back to Athens. He's around 70 kilometers away. He helped out tonight. We did our job. We have work tomorrow. He's going to finish his exam. And when are you going to meet on a Sunday, Monday? Monday. Yeah. He's going to do Brilliant. fine. Brilliant. He gets a special treatment. Aha. Uh -huh. So may I first say thank you very much to everybody who supplied these wonderful questions. May I then thank Spiros, Sam, Amanda, and Ziggy. I think it has been the most wonderful evening. We have all learned so much, me included. And uh, stay, stay safe, stay well, and I hope you all look forward to many more Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdoms. This really has been full of wisdom from everybody, and who knows, we might get to do a panel again. <laughs> <laughs>